Hmm. Here we go. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Hey. Yo. Yo how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How you been? Uh, I've been good. I mean, up yeah. and down like everybody, but long time no see. I know, long time no see, but you know, here we are. We we made it. We made it. <laughs> you know, it's just been crazy. I think everybody is just like holding their breath for December thirty first, uh, yes. uh, January first. You know, exactly, exactly. I know my niece was born on New Year's Eve, so I'm like, your birthday. We just need to make it to your birthday to for the times to change. <laughs> we go, we gonna make it one way or another. I we are no gonna doubt. make it, and I'm excited for 2021. Even though I was, I'm not too mad at 2020. I think it um, it created some clarity, created a lot oh, of yeah. clarity, which for sure I'm thankful for. I mean, I wish yeah. it wasn't as crazy as it was, but you know, sometimes we need to shake it up to to know what yeah. is important. So. Yeah, you know, and, and listen, I mean, it's 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 the bittersweet, right, of mm -hmm. of the shake up for those of us who are here, mm -hmm. right? Like we can take the power and the positivity out of it, saying, yeah, you know, some things I've shaken up in my life that I needed to get shaken up. The sad part is how many people have needlessly died. Yeah, you know, that didn't necessarily need to die. So that's that's the part that I think oh, I just want to make sure we always just that I personally just stay in touch with. Not that I stay yeah. in a sad emotion all day, but I think it's just important to to just be reminded of those how many people are not here right now. How many people are not here and how many people still won't be here that like yeah. we're going to lose a lot more before it gets better. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, I I personally my dad is sick not with COVID, but with cancer, and I can't spend time oh, with him wow. because Sorry of uh, because of this. But I'm I'm thankful for technology, and I'm thankful yeah. Yeah, for yeah. the people helping him that Amen. are putting themselves at risk, like all the healthcare yeah. workers and everybody that is is healing or helping heal people and yeah. putting themselves on the line to do that because right. mm -hmm. that is not my gift to do that, but. I'm thankful for the people that have that gift and that God too. put that on them to do that. And yeah. what a beautiful time for them. And so I hope we, are. We, we show them more appreciation, even not just in times of this pandemic, but even when this is over, realizing how important certain jobs are to our economy and to just us living, living our lives. Absolutely. 1,000%. 1,000%. Yeah. And praying, praying for your father's healing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I believe, I believe he will. I believe he will. Amen. He's a strong man, strong man and faithful. So nice. that's all I can do is give it to God. That's it. That's all we can do. So I, I am thankful and I appreciate you sharing this space and this time and this energy with me today. Yeah. Um, I started these conversations because I believe that conversations are a great way for us to, to not only grow, but to heal as a community so that we can see our differences. We can see how we are all alike and how we are all different and find the beauty in that. So, Absolutely. So with that, I would say to begin with, let's start big and then go small. We kind of brought on it for a moment, but 2020, what is your, what is your thought of 2020 when you think about it? What is, what comes to your heart? Um, you know, what, what comes to my heart, I mean, it's similar to what we talked about earlier, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that there, it's like when there's a major reconcil reconciliation, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that in accounting terms, you know, when someone is reconciling the books, you know, they're reconciling the profit and losses, they're reconciling what's gone out versus what's come in, in order to balance the books, right, to get things back in order, Mm -hmm. And so I do believe this has been a major year of, of reconciliation, you know, and, and we're all being reconciled with our purpose, with, with what, what really matters, what doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that, you know, and I'm guilty of it too, before the pandemic, you know, being on the hamster wheel of, of just the routine and the busy and the grind. Um, and I certainly needed to be reconciled back to my purpose and to God and what matters and what doesn't. And so mm -hmm. I do, my personal opinion is that it's been a major year of reconciliation, major year. 
And, um, and I do think as a country, you know, we've gone through that and as a world um, and everyone. And the, and the interesting thing, I, I don't remember, in, at least in my lifetime, where there's one event that mm -hmm. affects everyone. There's no person you can't go to in the, you can't, no place you can't go to in the world. There's no person you can't talk to in the world where when you say, oh, mask and COVID and mm -hmm. social distance, they know what you're talking about because they've yeah. had to do it too. So it's, it's a global shared experience, which, which even in the pain of it, we've been reconciled back to each other. Yes. You know, we've been reconciled back to community. We've been reconciled back to what that actually means. And, mm -hmm. and even with all of the division that goes on politically, we still share that same experience, which I'm, I'm hoping can be a foundation that can lead to some, some more healing in the future. I, I would have to, to piggyback on that and agree. I think the community that this has caused and the slowdown, which opened our eyes to a lot of things that have already been happening in terms of political unrest, racial divide, all of those things, which, which had been happening, but how we were all slowed down and had yeah. our eyes open to see it. And then, we're able to conversate about it because what else were we going to do? What else right. were we going to do? Because we were all stopped. That's like, right. What a beautiful orchestration in the midst of such a painful experience, the growth that we are able to, to come out with from That's that. Right. And we no longer need to be blind. And I, for me personally, I'm so thankful for, for the slowdown, for the slowdown in our industry. Yeah. I would write every day and be out all night. And I, my friends have said, you look happy. I'm like, I'm, I'm rested <laughs> and I'm, right. I'm rested and I I'm, and I'm, can pray, I can journal, I can do all the things that I want to do, but I was putting my career above all of that. Ooh, and I, I kind understand. of flip flopped it. And I, I was like, there. I shouldn't be that tired. I just shouldn't. Yeah. Not, not yep. in my thirties, no. <laughs> <laughs> so in that, we kind, you kind of started reaching on it, but there's a lot of divisiveness right now. There's a lot of people that have disagreements. There are people that are angry with one another, whether it be politically, whether it be financially, whatever it is, as a, a man of faith and a man of God, how, how do you handle disagreements in this climate when it's so divisive and God has called us to love one another? We are all made in his image. How do you handle that and, and use the word to push through it? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think it all, you know, when you talk about love, you know, it's like, okay, we're called to love. I mean, there's the scripture that everyone references, um, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So I mean, in my experience, a lot of the teaching is around the loving your neighbor part. Mm -hmm. but, but what happens is it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. So if I'm not loving my neighbor well, that's a reflection of how I love myself. Because when I'm really loving myself and I'm really kind to myself and I'm really compassionate to me, mm -hmm. it, it makes it really hard for me to not give that to you. Yeah. So if I'm not giving it, it's because I don't have it. So I, I you know, right now I have tea, right? So yeah. if somebody wants some tea, I'm like, okay, well I got tea. Cool, no problem. But if I, when I finish this tea, and somebody wants tea, I don't have it, I can't give it to them. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about love, we first have to look inside. Yeah. And so when somebody writes something and you don't agree with them and you want to get mad or you, you start you know, becoming a you know, social media sniper, right? <laughs> the question is, if that is not who you want to be, you have, allowed, you have given that person that you just went in on Mm -hmm. the authority to disrupt your emotions, your focus, and your ability to love. Someone yeah. you may not even know. So, yeah. so it comes down to, you know, to what's the life that you want to live, right? So we all have to make that decision. Mm -hmm. So if we want to live in a world that has more harmony, then we have to be in harmony first. And so when we see people that say something that we don't agree with, I'm not saying that you can't engage but the question is, is your engagement with that person doing one of two things? One, either taking you out of the emotion you want to be in. Okay. Or two, is your communication and engagement uh, making good on your intent? 
Mm -hmm. So if my intent is to love and I'm engaging with someone I don't dis that I disagree with, I still have to make sure that my, my communication, how I dialogue still translate that love. Yeah. Still yes. translates that respect and communicates that. So, you know, I've, I've, you know, I'm not a Trump supporter. I've, you know, engaged with some Trump supporters online. Mm -hmm. And my, my number one disposition is at the end of the day, Trump is going to go, he's going to be gone, but you're still going to be here. I'm still going to be here. So I'm not going to allow something in the moment to get me out of a relationship God has called me to permanently. That's so as, so as a follower, you know, of Christ, as a, as a lover of God, God says, I'm telling you, love, love is the way, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. That is the only commandment that matters. Okay, great. Great. Now someone's talking about whipping uh, Jesus, people, Jesus whipping people in the temple. I'm going to come back to that. Yeah. So great. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Wonderful, mm -hmm. right? So if that is what I'm called to do, then I have to make sure that even when I'm engaging with someone, like, you know, there was a woman that I was dealing with and she didn't like what I posted, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I never got to name calling. I never judged. Mm -hmm. I never got to the place of, you know, pointing the finger. I explained why I said what I said, what, you know, and I offered compassion. And what was very clear is that she wanted to argue. And I didn't argue with her. I just said, I love you. You know, I hear you. We have a difference of opinion. I, it's all right. God bless you. And she wanted to argue. And so what I said is, well, well guess what? I don't want to argue. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow myself to be brought into that emotion. Because then yeah. what happens is that that one moment, that person, I don't even know, I let her get me out of the emotion that I want to be in, and it ruins my whole day. It ruins my whole week with somebody I didn't even know. And who knows, maybe that interaction planted a seed of love and unity that may not grow until later, but the seed is planted. So yes. there is a way for us to have a di disagreement, but to do it in a way where we do not judge, we don't become disrespectful, and we respect the others, other person's point of view of yeah. understanding it's their right, whether they choose to believe or engage with us or not. Mm -hmm. So this is a long answer to your question, long answer, but, <laughs> you know, I think this is an important thing because right now we have a choice. What energy do we want to live in? What energy do we want to live in? Do we want to live in, you know, I was just, it, I was just texting with somebody and I said, I hope you're excellent. And they responded to me literally two minutes before I got online, not sure about excellent. This guy, Trump keeps me on edge. So what's interesting is like, okay, so this particular person has given up her power. Yeah. And allowed, and here's the reality. If, and this is the thing, as much as someone else may allow Trump to get them on edge, you have to ask yourself, well, is Trump really on edge? I don't think so. No. He's going to leave this office with billions of dollars. He'll be fine. He's okay. <laughs> right. So I'm, so even if he wasn't okay, I got to focus. Am I going to be okay? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I got to, I got to stay in the energy God's calling me to stay in. So yeah. I think it's really important to get back to a place of not allowing our anger to make us reactive. Because when we see something that we don't like, you know, it's very easy to, uh, you know, get reactive. Yeah. It's very easy. It's, it's just, it's just like, oh, uh, you know, we, we, it's like we immediately want to, you know, point the finger. We want to, but, you know, bring someone down. And I think that in order for us to get back to harmony and unity, mm -hmm. We have to be a committee of one that yeah. says, I'm not going to, the Bible says, be angry, but sin not, mm -hmm. you know? So when you look at the person that was saying, oh, what about Jesus turning over the tables? Again, his intent was, this is supposed to be a house of prayer, mm -hmm. you know? And you all have made it into a den of thieves, right? Love does not mean that I hold, withhold my opinion. Love means that I make sure that my intent is clear in my action. Mm -hmm. So long answer to your question, but I believe these are some of the ways we can get back to um, dealing with difficult times and difficult people. Yeah, I I would, I appreciate that answer and, and I needed that answer because I've, I keep going back, as you had said about compassion. I, I try to say, just because you believe something different than I do, what is my example that I am showing you in my belief? 
what what are you seeing if i choose to argue with you and i choose to be angry and stuff or is that my character that's not the character i want to to step in so i'm going to choose to be compassionate and to sometimes be silent and know that that might be the power that they need to see that might be the action they need to see to understand where i stand on on politics Absolutely. or whatever that I do because I say a lot of opinions on this on these episodes. I'm I'm very liberal. Mm -hmm. I'm very for every race. All these things, but I I live in Tennessee and I have a lot of people that are that have very different views than I do. I understand. I understand. <laughs> very. I work in country music. Just very different views than I do. I so, know it. I know it. <laughs> I put myself out there. Um, on that, something I've been. Personally, a lot of people have come up to me and talked about this, about Jesus and about different figures in the Bible, historically have always been portrayed as white, white men, white women. And we know anthropologically and everything, they're not, they're not white. Does that, especially with the racial divide in this country and people being able to see themselves in, in these figures, does that, I don't want to use the word upset you, but do you think that affects people when all of our our leaders, and I would say everybody that we worship and that we find is white, that we consider them white because white is the supreme? Or do you think that those things should be changed in the church to accurately display the, the race of, of Jesus, of Mary, of the disciples, of all of these figures? Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, yeah, I think it makes sense. I mean, I haven't really thought much about it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I mean, but what I would say is, is that, you know, when you look at the history of, of, of when you look at colonization and, mm -hmm. and the need to, you know, I mean, almost this white supremacist, um, mm -hmm. you know, attitude, uh, and then backed up with action, you know, historically, mm -hmm. you see a tremendous amount of this when you look at what happened with the, you know, in Egypt and so mm -hmm. many other areas where, um, you know, those that were conquering were replacing what was happening with, okay, hey, we are now in power. So we want, mm -hmm. you know, you all to everyone that's underneath our authority mm -hmm. to make sure that the authority figures look like us. Yeah. So, you know, do I think historically that that, I mean, not historically, but do I think now, I mean, I haven't seen a white Jesus in a very long time, to be honest with you. Um, because there's been a lot of uh, advocacy around, look, well, we know Jesus was not white. You know, I've been Jesus. to Israel. I've been to Jerusalem. Um, so I, but I also think that the onus is on all of us mm -hmm. to, again, like there, we can choose to be in division or we can choose to be in unity. It's mm -hmm. our choice. Yeah. Right. So when it comes to this issue of the, what does Jesus look like? Let's go back to the Bible. Right. Okay. Yeah. The skin you know, like brass, I mean, like, you know, like but br brass burning a fur furnace and eyes of fire, like, okay, got hair like wool, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so then we look at that and say, all right, well, this is the description that we got from the word. How then do we make sure the word aligns with the images? And then mm -hmm. also when we see images that don't align with the word, I think it's important to understand well, where that comes from, right? Yeah. That's not coming from God, you know, yeah. at all. That's coming from an agenda that looks to control and to undervalue specifically people of color specifically people of color mm -hmm. and their self-esteem, specifically people of color, their self-esteem and their faith. And so for mm -hmm. me, when I see those images, um, you know, when I was growing up, yeah, I would get really mad. I'm like, oh, this isn't mm -hmm. right. This isn't right. You know, I'd be in some, you know, black churches and I'm like, how you got the, the white <laughs> Jesus in the stained glass? That ain't yep. right, you know? Yep. <laughs> um, uh, but, but what I did not do is I did not allow that to be a, 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 pebble in the stone of to be a pebble in the shoe of my faith right mm -hmm. like just because somebody puts forth an image of jesus that's not accurate that does not disrupt my relationship with jesus mm -hmm. and that to me is where where the difference is that yes we can look at hey you know there has been a tremendous amount of white supremacy uh mm -hmm. that has infiltrated christianity right mm -hmm. history has told us that we can look good we lost you for a second 
it's okay. We can get them right back on. This is what we say. Technical difficulties, folks. Technical difficulties. Got them right back. Get them right back in here. It's going to be good. Hey, you're back. Wait, hold on. I can't hear you now. Shoot. Oh. Yeah. Hold on. One second. No problem. Can you hear me? No. You got me? Can you hear me? No. I can hear you. Hello? Yeah. I can? I can hear you. Yeah. I can't hear you. I'll be right back in. Okay. Do it again. See? This is how we roll. This is how we roll in, in this. Thanks, y'all, for being patient. We're going to... It's patience. Thank you, Anastasia. Yes, the word will still come through. It's, ah, here we go. Let's get him back in. Just drinking my ginger. Hey, do you hear me? Can you hear me now? No. Oh, that's what, can you hear me now? Yeah, you got it? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> See? All right. It's all gonna it's all it all works out. It all, it all works, works out. out. I was gonna say the reason that question was started was my nephew um is sick. It's like and he had said to me, he's like, with all of the shootings and everything, he's like, Why is is it because Jesus is white and he doesn't like us? And I was, and I was like, why would you, why would you say that? And he's like, cause at church, Jesus is white and, and he must just not like us. And that was the mindset of, of a six year old who, who is biracial and trying to, to find his faith, but also reconcile what he is seeing and hearing from the adults in his life about his race and people and not showing value in our society so i was like i wonder if he had seen growing up of a black jesus if he would have that same question or if it's because he's only seen seen him white i always yeah. wonder what it does to your mind when you don't see images of yeah yourself no that's that's a good question I mean, you know that's a good i mean that's so my heart goes out um, you know, growing up, you know, we were, you know, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother and my grandmother's seven sisters. And, you know, we and my, were raised in the church. And so we mm -hmm. had a lot of pro black and black power conversations and yeah. history. So it, we, we had a lens through which to see those images mm -hmm. of white Jesus. Right. We weren't we didn't just take that in. think, Oh, that's Jesus. We knew like, well, that's not Jesus. Right. That is someone else's interpretation based upon what their agenda was. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping and praying that the conversation that was that was started through, um, you know, what he was saying could really produce a positive outcome so he can know that, you know, Jesus is not against people of color at all. Like, yeah. that's just not, that's not reality. Yeah, I, I, in all this, one of the other blessings of, of 2020 is being able to have those conversations with, with the youth that, are okay with asking that question and being able to to break it down and really talk about love and Jesus and and everything going on and how things aren't always fair but we always can could come to him and yeah. lay our worries at his feet and really that can bring you so much peace and I've Absolutely. I've found that in the season and and had been like I said earlier, not doing it as much as I, I should have. And I was tired because of it. And I realized I, I shouldn't be that tired because I should be giving some of these burdens to God and not worrying about it in my heart. There you like, go. It doesn't need to be in my own head. I am That's not right. the one to solve this problem or That's right. anybody else that I would text or, or have long conversations with to solve all of these problems. And I found that in the beginning of the pandemic, as we were seeing George Floyd, and all of these things i i was in i was getting into the gossip of it and getting into 
the emotion of typing things and getting mad and getting angry at people. And I was wondering, how do you feel as, as a leader in faith and, and as an example, and as somebody also in this industry and where this pandemic's happened, how do you feel like we are gonna move as we go into 2021 in this season? And how do you think we should move? Like what lessons mm -hmm. do you think we should take from 2020 and move into 2021? What things do you think we should just leave here and know that they are not going to be seeds that will grow good plants? Like it's not good soil. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think, I mean, the beauty of this, this year, uh, even though there's been so much darkness is that each one of us has, has different things that we will take. Yeah. Um, um, my, my hope is that, you know, especially anyone watching right now, will make the commitment to take something positive. Mm -hmm. You know, take something that, that they can say, you know what, may have even lost some loved ones, may have lost mm -hmm. a job. Here's what I'm taking into next year. Here's mm -hmm. what I'm taking in that, that I need in order to build a year next year that potentially is, is better than this year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, each one of us has the opportunity to do that. Uh, I know everybody's talking about, oh, you know, 2020 and can't wait to get out of it and all this kind of stuff. And I understand that sentiment, yet, I also want to make sure I come out of it with something better than I came in, you know, mm -hmm. which for me is reconciliation, is perspective. You know, I have a much better perspective on what matters, what doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And then bringing that perspective into next year and saying, oh, okay, here's what really matters. So then let me inform the things I say yes to, the things I say no to, you mm -hmm. know, uh, what, where I put my time, where I put my energy. Um, you know, how, you know, giving am I, how generous can I be, you know, how can I reprioritize my life around the things that matter the most and how can I say no to the things that don't matter? Uh, so my hope is that everyone takes something from this year that, that will help them build a better next year. Um, because what we can tell from this year is that we live in a, in a, in a time when we have to be flexible. Yeah. You know, everybody came into 2020. Oh, here's my plans. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Everybody's plans been disrupted. Everybody. E globally. Everybody. Globally. So, okay. How do I still have a year next year that gratifies me emotionally, spiritually, um, physically, no matter what happens? Okay. The only way that can happen is if we bring a perspective, we have a mindset next year. Mm -hmm. Because so often, even in this time of COVID, there still is a way to say, okay, I don't like what's happening to me. I don't like it, it doesn't feel good. Yet, <clears throat> I'm gonna resist the temptation to go into despair mentally. Yeah. Because if I go into despair, I know that that's not gonna bear any fruit. So, okay, all this is happening. How can I still work on keeping a mindset that will help me navigate no matter what comes my way? And so my hope is that when I say perspective, it's really code for mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, taking a mindset into next year that you say, okay, there may be something, heaven forbid, worse than COVID that happens. How do I have a mindset that allows me to navigate all the twists and turns of life and still find the beauty in it and still find the power in it and still find purpose in it. That to me is the hope that I, I, I pray that each one of us individually would take into next year. Thank you. Thank you. That I always end with asking about what you learned from 2020, I think that's the perfect summation of, <laughs> of what we, of what we collectively can learn and to bring into. I'm, yeah. I pray for everybody that has experienced okay. loss, whether it be a loved one, whether it be a job, um, Me too. financial burdens that are, that are happening, that are beyond anybody's control. And I pray for our government that we, we find some solutions and take ourselves out of it and, and really care about the people. Um, Amen. And that's my personal, personal prayer. Yeah. And then I also just want to say thank you again for joining me. I, it's like a, it's a full circle moment because <laughs> I remember when I met you at graduation and you would, I sat in your office and you said, what can I, what do you need? What, what can, how can I help you? And I, 
and 12 years ago or 11 years ago, I didn't have an answer to that question. And that question always goes into my mind every, every time I'm in a meeting or something, I'm like, what do I want? Where mm -hmm. I need to always be prepared for, to say what I want and to, and to know what I need. And, and I go back to that meeting in your office so many wow. years ago. I don't want to age us, but you know. <laughs> I know, right? Back in the so day. So many years ago, and that was a, <laughs> it was a pivotal moment when I realized also how much power I had and how I, I wasn't utilizing my gifts the way I, I should be. And so I, I thank you and I thank you for, for saying yes when I, I sent you a message. It's just, I, I appreciate it. I just want you to know that you are no appreciated. Problem. In my, my pleasure. Happy to support, grateful and excited about all you're doing. And yeah. just thank you for including me and uh, I'm grateful yeah. for the conversation. Thank you. I'll let you go, but I'll save okay. it on my page if anybody came in late and they, nice. can, they can hear this conversation. Okay, right. dope. Good all to right. see you, Steph. Take Good care. Good to God see bless. you. Bye. All right, peace.